it, with this this is a ritual. They're always out there. They're they're going through these motions uh, in the wake of uh, you know all of the tragedy that we've seen in America in the past couple of weeks. Is there is there an a, an early fatigue? Do you think that goes on with watching this politics as usual, the same old routines uh, from Iowa? People. Yeah, people could change the channel. I mean, not from this channel, of course, but, you know, if you're sick of politics, then you're not going to watch this. But lots of people are fascinated because, you know, the overall question is, can Donald Trump be defeated? Will he be defeated? And Democrats really want to defeat him. So how will they choose their one candidate who would have the, the, the greatest chance? Now, right now, I mean, we just saw the county fair in Des Moines, uh, the state fair in Des Moines. Uh, so how about the Wing Ding Dinner, right? That's the Iowa Democratic Party uh, serving, uh, it, it's a chicken dish by the way people make it in different ways in my experience it's like a, it's like a, it's like meatballs made out of chicken very crunchy and you know why they're crunchy usually made with potato chips and celery in the batter but back to the politics <laughs> 21 candidates for president are speaking at that event and the, each of them is given seven minutes on stage at the wing thing right so everybody's you know crunching on their chicken and it's a fundraiser for the party everyone gets seven minutes it's more than three hours of speeches and the last one tonight, Central Time, 9.57 p.m., and yeah, they have a schedule, is actually former Vice President Joe Biden. A and people do listen to all this. So, yeah, it's a ritual, but you know as well as I, Iowans are really interested and they're proud of being the first in the nation to vote. That'll be February 3rd, the Iowa caucuses. They're proud of that, Michael. Yeah, and, and you can really feel it when you're on the ground there in, in Iowa. They, they take this uh, assignment very seriously. Uh, you, you talk about all the people that are listening to what they're saying and doing. You, uh, you cover the White House pretty closely. Do you get the feeling that the president, aside from the tweets and the snide remarks about some of the candidates, as any you know, opponent would do, um, do you get the, the feeling that the president pays a great deal of attention to this? Well, he watches one particular TV channel and makes no secret of it. It's Fox News and sometimes other conservative outlets. And once in a while, he samples others. The White House is aware of I-24 News, for better or for worse. Uh, and he, So, yes, I mean, he's interested in politics ever since he became a politician, which is just four years ago. So he's interested. He thinks Joe Biden will most likely be the nominee. And even today, President Trump said he's happy about that because Joe Biden isn't the Biden he used to be. He's lost his fastball and so we're just starting to hear what kind of insults President Trump will hurl at his challenger no matter who it is Mike. and you, you they're preparing for Joe Biden but these the, the president and the White House advance team and Brad Parscale at, at his campaign they're also preparing for other candidates too there are people that that he would like to face less than Joe Biden aren't there uh, it's a little bit tricky, you see, when it comes to sort of the new wave of Democrats or the ones who are more socialist, as the White House and other Republicans often put it. And they include Bernie Sanders, so that's not exactly a new wave and certainly not a young wave. Uh, but if a socialist, as they put it, runs against President Trump, then they, they claim they'll have an easier time. Now, you're a pundit, too, Michael Schur. I'm not sure that Trump would have an easier time against someone who has clear principles and a real alternative. On the other hand, Joe Biden is considered by many Democrats to be the safe choice. He's already been vice president. Americans know him. And as long as he doesn't make too many verbal gaffes, but this week he made at least one. Uh, you know what I'm referring to when he said uh, that poor children have just as much chance as, or just as much talent as white children. He quickly corrected himself. You know, he changed it to rich children, wealthy children, black children. But these are gaffes. That could be Biden's Achilles heel, Michael. Dan Raviv, who never makes a gaffe. Have a great weekend, Dan. Thanks for being with us. Thanks. Now we move to your.